Okay, so this is a short tutorial about using QLC and doing um, editing cues on the fly. So first of all, let me show you what I've got going on here. Let's go to fixtures. And um, I've got four front of house fixtures, just regular incandescent, four downstage incandescents, four upstage incandescents. And then for the heck of it, I threw in four flurry cues. So these are movable, um, moving lights. You got pan tilt. Uh, intensity and then red, green, blue, and white LEDs in those lights. All right. Now, one thing I did recommend in one of my other tutorials, and that is make uh, using groups, make um, groups of your uh, groups of lights because it helps you when you're programming the program faster. So what I've done over here is I have a front of house group which includes my four front of house lights. You can see over here, my downstage group, my upstage group, and then for the Moving lights, what you want to do is you want to keep a, uh, create groups for each of the attributes. So I have a group controlling pan on all four lights. I have a group controlling tilt on all four lights, intensity on all four lights, red on all four, green on all four, blue on all four, and then white on all four. And that'll make a little more sense when you're actually doing some programming. But I highly suggest you do create these groups. It makes programming a lot faster. So let's take a look over at the functions here. So I created some scenes, and you'll see when these come up now. If I have created groups, or actually go to general here, one of the things you want to do with your groups is when I'm programming, I select the lights from the group. Even though I may not be using all of the lights from that group, I select the groups that I'm going to be using for this particular scene that I'm creating and put a check mark in there. What that allows me to do then, that will bring up this groups tab over here where then I can access the groups of lights and control them in groups if I want to rather than having, rather than having to go to each individual fixture and adjust the intensity or the color or whatever. So it makes it a lot faster. Rather than having to go to four fixtures here, I can control all four. And even with the LEDs, say I've got the position right, but I want to change this color, the red and green, a little bit. I can adjust it here, and it'll adjust it on all four lights rather than have to go individually. However, you are not limited. Uh, you can control individually. I can collect, click all fixtures. It'll probably come up looking like this. And you can see you get the lights one at a time, front of house one, two, three, four, and they're over here downstage uh, and so and so when I get over my flurry cues you'll see that they come up that's flurry cue one that's a single fixture flurry cue two so you can get in and do individual adjustments if you would like to if you click this tab here it'll give you a different view which I prefer this view so it shows all my lights going across the board here and I can scroll back and forth and adjust individual lights okay so I have recorded four scenes in here and then what I did is cre I created a main queue stack. And if you look at my tutorial for this, I put the scenes into the queue stack. Make sure that you do fade in speed uh, per step and fade out speed per step so you can uh, adjust individual fade in and fade out times. Um, stop duration, I just leave that common and it's going to be in infinity. So it stays on each queue until you tell it to go to the next queue. All right, so let's take a look at my virtual console, what I've done here. Looks like I'm still in run mode. Let me take it out to design mode. So I have sliders controlling my front of house lights, my downstage lights, my upstage lights. And then these sliders over here control all four. So this dimmer, uh, intensity or dimmer is for all four, controls all four flurry cues at the same time. This red controls the red and all four at the same time. Green and all four, blue and all four, white and all four, and then pan and tilt in all four at the same time. Uh, now, one other thing I do want to show you on these sliders. Double click here. First thing I do is I go to percentage because I want to see percent up here rather than actually DMX value. If you like DMX, then you can leave it on actual and it will show you 0 to 255 instead of 0 to 100%. Because DMX works from 0 to 255. I prefer a percentage where it goes from 0 to 100%. Uh, as far as that goes. And I preset this to level. When you click level, a thing will come up here and you click, yeah, you want to go to level. Then you get this menu in here and I, and I select what lights I want the slider to control. So I basically say I just want this slider to control front of house one and I select that. One last thing, click down here where it says monitor the selected channels and update the slider level. I'll click OK. So I've done that for all of these lights up here. Um, 
if we double click this slider you'll see how this is controlling I'm going to go to level you'll see how this is controlling the intensity level in flurry Q1 it's also controlling the intensity level in flurry Q2 it's controlling intensity in flurry Q3 and it's controlling intensity in flurry Q4 um, sliders can be anything you want and they can control individual lights they can control groups of lights it all depends on what you want to do as far as the way you're de designing your virtual console alright so let's get into editing here let's start up go to run mode I'm going to bring up my DMX monitor here what I did is I created a little grid here and uh, I have a tutorial showing how to do that that's DMX view here's my grid view uh, my four front of house lights, my downstage lights, my upstage lights, and my flurry cues. Now I'm going to start running my cue list. I start out with a blackout, uh, progress to the next cue, and you can see these are following. And you can see a visual representation of these lights coming on. You can see what's going on across here. Okay, so that's scene one. So let's say we want to edit something in scene one that we have these. Uh, these two lights in here, they're on like at a lower level, and we decide, you know what, I think it would be better probably with just taking those lights out. So what we do is you simply go up here to this icon, click that, and your window is going to open up, and I have to choose here Scene 1, OK. Now I go to my Downstage 1 and my Downstage 4 lights and take them out, and you can see them coming out of here and you can see them coming out of the visual representation click the X that scene has now been changed okay so scene one has been amended and it's been changed so I'm going to advance and just to show you that for sure it has been changed to go back and you can see yeah that one and four has been taken out and that scene has been changed alright so that may work for you in most uh, most circumstances it's a pretty quick fix I'm going to progress here to scene three so here's scene three, and I'm doing my cue list and stuff, and I'm, there's a blackout after this, and then this scene down here, I decide, well, you know what? This is going to have the exact same lighting as scene three, so I'm just going to reuse scene three again. So I do that. So you have a blackout, and I have like scene three again, because um, I'm reusing that exact same light cue. I want the same intensity, same position, everything for that. All right, then we get into rehearsals then, and then... I'd suddenly decide, well, you know what? I don't want this to be the same as this. I, I want a slight change in here. Um, so now I, I can't use this because if I use this and change scene three, it's going to affect this scene three up here. It will change the way that that scene three looks. So I have another option here then. What I can do is I can make my changes here. Let's say I want to add in these two lights, and notice when I add them, I get red buttons here to show me that I'm doing something that's changing something that's not originally recorded into the scene. Now what I'm going to do is record a new scene here, and I'm going to call it 3A. So I'm going to record, and I'm going to say dump all channels just to be safe. And I'm going to title this scene 3A. and then I'm going to stay over here that I would like this to go in as part of the main queue stack and then click OK. Now you notice what it's done is added scene 3A down here so it's not in the right position. So it has added that queue for us but you know our this scene 3 still looks like this. So if we progress to blackout and this is a slow blackout and then scene 3A is there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is stop this from running, get out of performance mode, go back to my functions, my main queue stack. Now it didn't include it didn't include scene 3A here, but it put it over here. So what I'm going to do is go here, say I want to add a scene in here. I want scene 3A. I want it to go in here. Then I have to add my timing. So I click my clock and say, you know, it's going to be a fade in in three seconds, and it's going to be a slow blackout. So a three second, oop, three second fade out after that, 
and then I'm going to take my scene three here and just eliminate it. So now we've gotten rid of that old scene three and put in a new scene three A. So this is not something you can do on the fly. So if you think you're going to be editing all of the cues, and if we go back to a virtual console, um, and this may be a glitch because it's still showing the scene 3A there, but it's not showing the scene 3A there. So that might be something. I don't know if that's a glitch or not. Let's see what happens when we go to run mode here. We'll go back to virtual console, and I'm going to go to a run mode. Yeah, it's still there, so I don't know. That might be a little bit of a glitch or something that's in there. So, um, But you can always, I think you can run and go to blackout, and it shouldn't cause a problem there. Okay. Um, so that's how, how you would go about doing that, and then I can just start running it again. I would say this. If you're going to anticipate that each scene is going to be totally different lighting, that you're not going to reuse anything, then just create scenes for everything over here. That way, when you're going to go and you're going to edit, you can simply use this edit mode here and just go in and edit your scene and then it'll be done and it'll be adjusted and that'll be the easiest thing rather than having to take something and reuse it if you want to do that okay and there is a trick to that too just a little tip if you're back here and say I have a scene 3 um, don't forget you can use and I showed you how to do this you can right click on this and say clone and I can create a copy of this which is the exact same lighting but then adjust some things on it too so that's another thing that you can actually do when you're doing some of your cues. Um, so again, if you think you're going to be doing a lot of changes, then you might want to just go ahead and make different scenes for everything. That way, when you go into edit mode here, it's not going to cause an issue with you know having to create new scenes and then relo relocate them in your cue list and everything else. Okay. All right. Hopefully, uh, this is helpful to you.